Hey, what's up everyone? This is David. If you guys saw my last few videos, you definitely know that I am hyped as hell for Shin Megami Tensei 5. I keep thinking about what the game will look like or how it will play. For this video, I want to get more specific and give my thoughts and wishes for the upcoming SMT games. Of course, like everyone, I want good graphics, a beautiful soundtrack and a great story. I'm not too worried though since Megaton games tend to be really good in those basic aspects. In this video, I'll focus on the little things more specific that I think would make SMT5 a better package overall. If you want more content on SMT5, don't hesitate to check out my other videos and please consider subscribing since I will cover 100% of SMT5 on, until it releases and also after launch. You guys might know already, but if you don't, I'm currently doing a giveaway on the channel for a 100 subscriber special and it's for a free copy of Catherine Full Body on the Nintendo Switch or a Steam code for Persona 4 Golden. The giveaway winner will be announced on the 7th of July. To enter, it's easy. All you gotta do is be subscribed to the channel and click the link in the description below to register. Good luck and now on to today's video. So here are my hopes for SMT5. First up, I want a lot of demons. Why am I worried, you'll ask? Why am I even talking about this? As we know, SMT5 is being developed under Unreal Engine 4 and it is Atlas's first time working with the engine, with the SMT brand at least. Which means that it will be a challenge for them to develop this game, so I hope that they won't choose to cut the number of demons to reduce the development time because to this day, the variety of demons that you can recruit in the SMT games has always been amazing and I hope SMT5 will continue the trend with its HD debut. Another thing that I think would be really cool for SMT5 is the ability to skip cutscenes. Let me explain what I mean here. When I play a game, I always listen to the cutscenes, except one time. And that's when I have to listen to it multiple times. Here's my example. When you are trying to fight a boss in SMT, sometimes, you guys know, they will give you a hard time. Some of the bosses are pretty hard. And I recently finished Soul Ackers that I reviewed, by the way, if you guys want to check it out, I'll leave the link on the screen right now if you want to check it out. But there was a certain boss during the game that I had a hard time with, and before you fight him, there's a dialogue. And the dialogue takes like, honestly, I think it takes like three minutes to get through, and I could not skip it. So if I tried to beat the boss for like eight times, I had to re-listen to the dialogue for eight times. It's not major, but it, it just sucks. It would have been better if I could just skip it. So that's one of my simple but good hopes that I hope SMT5 will give us the option to skip those cutscenes, skip those dialogues if we want. It would also be cool if they could inc include a guest character from another franchise in the game as a playable character or as a boss. Uh, Dante from Devil May Cry comes to mind when he when he was in uh, SMT Nocturne. It was really cool when he appeared. So I would like something similar to be cool. Uh, I don't know who they could have in though. Uh, I listened to the Midnight's Channel's video on the subject for his hopes on SMT5. If you want to check his video out, it's it's great. I'll add the link to the in my description as well. Uh, and he gave the the idea of adding Bayonetta on the game, which I thought would be super cool. And I also had the idea of Travis Touchdown for No More Heroes in mind. I think he would be a cool guest since he's, uh, you know, he's kind of a savage and he's a more mature character. Well, I guess we'll see if Atlas wants to go in that direction again of adding a guest character for SMT5, but I think it would be cool. Another thing that I would like to see in the game is for Atlas to expand the combat system. Uh, one thing that I would really like is the choice to decide how your party looks like. What I mean by that is I would like to be able to decide if I want two heroes and the rest of my party to be demons or one hero and demons etc. I don't know if they'll do anything major with the combat system as far as changes goes and that's okay for me since I feel like the combat is something that they do extremely well in SMT games and I'm confident that they'll do a great job with this uh, upcoming release as well but the ability to decide how many characters you want at the same time whether they're demons or hero I think would be super cool. The last hope, the last wish that I had in mind for SMT5 would be more features that make the game accessible for newcomers. As you might have seen with my last SMT5 video, uh, it was titled SMT5 has the potential to be a hit for Atlas. I really do feel like the game has the potential to do extremely well sales-wise. I think it will bring a lot of newcomers to the franchise as well. 
I think it is very likely that the fifth installment will bring a bunch of newcomers to the franchise and I think it would be a great idea for Atlas to add a couple of features that would make the game more accessible for those newcomers. One of the examples that I have in mind is again a fresh example in my mind from Devil Summoner Soul Hackers that I played on the 3DS. In this game there's a few hacks that you can perform during your playthrough that I thought would be super cool for someone who's new to SMT. There were acts such as the ability to lower the difficulty level, for veterans it's also pretty cool since you can raise the difficulty level if you want. There was another addition that you could try, which was to see the whole map right away without needing to explore everything. So I know that again Atlas is pretty great on that front so I'm not too worried, but I really think it would be cool to just try to, to explain how SMT works for those newcomers since it's it's those those games are big and sometimes it might be a bit intimidating for someone that has never played anything from the franchise. Now for the second part of this video, here's what I don't want in SMT5. And again, just before I give those thoughts, those are my opinion and you definitely have the right to disagree or agree with me. Uh, please let me know what you think. I like to, to read your comments. The first thing that I don't want in SMT5 is too much Persona content. Uh, as big of a Persona fan as I am, I don't want Atlas to transform SMT into Persona. I don't want them to add Persona content in SMT5. What I mean by Persona content, for example, is to add some of its characters. Uh, we all know that Atlas likes to put Joker everywhere they can, so please just keep him off this game. I don't want them to make SMT true to mainstream as well. Uh, Megaton as a niche community, but we really like the games how they are and we don't want them to change too much of it. I'm talking about Persona here since I feel like Atlas might be thinking about doing something like adding Persona content to SMT5 since Persona is doing so well for them nowadays. So hopefully they will respect us SMT fans and just give us a pure SMT game without too much content forced into it from other franchises that they own. The last thing that I don't want in SMT5 is DLC overload. We know that Atlas is using DLC a lot nowadays. It's not necessarily a bad thing. While they're not the worst company to make use of DLC, they're not really good either, in my opinion. I don't want Atlas to add a bunch of DLC to the game that is ruining the experience, like making the game too easy or locking a certain part of the game under a paywall, under a DLC. Uh, an example of good use of DLC in my opinion is how Nintendo added content to Breath of the Wild or to Fire Emblem Tree Houses, which they completed the game. Uh, it was a major package, great game with a lot of hours to put into them. But then they created additional content after launch that they decided to sell to their fans. That's great DLC. An example of bad use of DLC would be Persona 5 Royal. Uh, where Atlas, they decided to re-release Persona 5 vanilla version. They re-released it for the PS4 again, but with the super ad cool additional content with the third semester and everything, that was awesome. And I'm okay with the re-release. What I'm not really okay with is if you decide to re-release a game, as kind of like the definitive edition of the game with Royal, don't charge for another DLC. Don't charge for other additional content. Like you're already charging us $60 for your re-release and you, you still charge us for additional DLC like cosmetics or additional bosses, stuff like that. I think that's cheap. I think it, that really sucks. And this is the type of DLC that I don't want in SMT5. So those were my thoughts for what I want and what I don't want from SMT5. I'm super curious. I'd like to hear you guys' thoughts about on the matter. What do you want to see in SMT5? What don't you want to see in the SMT5? Please let me know in the comment and I'll be happy to discuss afterwards with you. If you like the video, please give me a give me a thumbs up. That really helps to support the channel. And if you again, if you want more SMT content or Atlas content, don't hesitate to click that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in another video. Bye-bye. Go wash your thighs, thighs is all